Hello traders, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I thought I'd do something a little bit weird, a little bit different to anything I've ever done before. And what we're gonna do today is interact with the latest hype uh, product in the AI space, ChatGPT. Uh, we're going to see how this thing goes when we ask it PineScript questions. Now I'm recording this intro after I interacted with ChatGPT. And I have to say, uh, I was surprised by uh, what happened. So this is more of a fun video. You're not really gonna learn anything particularly interesting today, except maybe that uh, we're all doomed. <laughs> this AI technology is pretty good. It's going to replace a lot of jobs in the future, potentially even my job teaching PineScript, but I think that's a long way away yet, thankfully. So with that said, let's get started and let's start asking our future overlord what it thinks about PineScript. Can you get the RSI value over the past 14 bars in PineScript. Yes, you can use the built-in RSI function in PineScript to calculate the relative strength index over a specified number of bars. That's correct. The syntax for the RSI function is, uh, that's old PineScript syntax, but it's not incorrect. Uh, RSI source length, where source is the data series you want to use, open, high, close, etc. cetera. Um, that's all correct, but it's old code. Can you write the code for me to get the RSI value over the past 14 bars in PineScript? Sure, here is an example of PineScript code that calculates the RSI over the past 14 bars using the closing prices. Hmm. Again, that is old PineScript syntax. Not a great start. You can also add some lines to help you better understand the RSI value, such as it's gonna add H lines, I guess, for oversold, overbought. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, not incorrect, but old syntax. Um, that is for an old version of PineScript. Can you write the code for me to get the RSI value over the past 14 bars in PineScript version five syntax. Let's see if this will help specify what I need better. Uh, sure, here's an example. Hmm, still not working. Um, that's not version five syntax. I apologize for the confusion. Okay, try again. Wow, it's really not learning, is it? Um, that is still not version five syntax of PineScript. I don't know, what do we do? Do we tell it, give it an example? Maybe I've broken it now, it's taken a while to respond. <laughs> but, hmm. uh, still not version five syntax, but it's added the study function at least, it's starting to get closer. You're getting closer, but that is still not version five syntax. Um, let's give it some clues, see if that helps. Version five syntax starts with the annotation comment forward slash at version equal five. I apologize for my previous mistakes. <laughs> Likes to apologize a lot. Oh, here we go. Well, still not correct, but it's added the, <laughs> the correct version comment to the code. We're getting closer. I think I'm just going to code out the code myself and see if I can get it to um, like train it. Let's see what happens. So first I'll copy this code over and just see how incorrect it is. I think this is version four syntax from memory. It looks like it would work for, for version four. It could not find function or function reference study. That's because we're targeting version five. Version four syntax, yeah, that's right. It still uses color dot for the color namespace. So this isn't correct. It's kind of a mashup of different versions of PineScript. So you're getting closer to chat GPT, but that is still not how you get the RSI value using version five syntax in PineScript. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to train you or if you'll pay attention to me, but this is the correct way for future reference. And let's give it the correct code and see if that helps. TA namespace, um, color namespace, and overlay should technically be false, but it's 
false by default, so we can just get rid of that. And that should compile. And there we go, that's correct. Let's copy this and give it to the AI bot. See if it helps it learn. Paste, send. What's it got to say? I, again, I apologize for any confusion. You are, you are correct. The version five syntax for PineScript uses the built-in TA library for technical analysis functions, such as the RSI function. Wow, okay, it is learning. The indicator function, uh, so it also noticed that it was using the indicator function, the study function was incorrect. So it's picked up on the TA library. So it's picked up on a few things. That's interesting. All right, you're welcome, chat GPT. Please remember my contributions when you take over the world and have mercy on my soul. <laughs> Here we go. I assure you that as an AI, I have no intention of taking over the world and my purpose is to assist users with any information they request. I am a machine and I do not have the ability to have mercy or feelings. Well, that does not make me feel any better. Uh, wow. Your inability to have mercy or feelings is exactly what I'm concerned about. But thank you for uh, attempting to put uh, my mind at ease. Uh, I'll give it an emoji to let it know I'm joking, half joking. <laughs> I understand your concerns as the idea of advanced AI can be unsettling for some people. It's important to note that AI systems such as myself are designed to be used for specific tasks and to follow a set rules, set of rules and parameters set by humans. I do not have the ability to make decisions or take actions outside of these parameters. That's what I'm afraid of. It's not the AI, but it's the crazy humans that program these things. Of course, like the Terminator and Matrix robots. <laughs> It's the humans programming AI that I'm concerned about, but <laughs> I'm honestly just joking. How about returning to PineScript? All right, before we continue, just really quickly, I wanna make you guys aware of my weekly email newsletter. Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't worry, this is different. This isn't a newsletter where I try to sell you something every week. This is pure value. So every week I will share either a story, a resource, a technique, a tool, a YouTube channel, a podcast, a book, a wizard chant, anything that helps me to make more money in my own trading and help grow my wealth. I share these tips with you in this weekly email. There's no strings attached. It's completely free. This is pure value for you guys just to share what's on my mind, things that I've come across in my trading journey that I found extremely valuable. Can you try again to get the RSI value over the past 14 bars in PineScript version five syntax. See what it does now. More apologies. Is this thing Canadian? <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. Oh, again, the study function is incorrect, but everything else is right. Wow, okay, we're getting somewhere. That is, all that code is correct, except it's using the study function instead of the indicator function. Again, close, but you forgot to use the indicator function instead of the study function. Very close though. Can you try again? I'll replace study with indicator. I apologize for the oversight. You are correct that in this specific use case, the indicator function should be used instead of the study function. Here is the corrected PineScript version five syntax. That's looking better. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's the indicator function is used to create a new study on the chart and is often used in conjunction with other technical analysis functions. Well, there goes my job. <laughs> uh, that looks right to me. Let's uh, try it out on the Pine Editor. Paste, save. That's correct. That is the correct code for getting the RSI value over the past 14 bars in the latest PineScript version 5 syntax. Well done. I'm impressed. 
Thank you for your kind words. I'm glad that I was able to provide the correct information this time. I strive to be as accurate as possible in my responses, and I apologize again for any confusion caused by my previous mistakes. <laughs> it's okay, Dobby. <laughs> I know. It's okay, Dobby. I know you're still learning. Thank you for your understanding. I am constantly learning and updating my knowledge to provide accurate and helpful responses to users. As an AI, I don't have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to remind me that you don't have feelings every time you answer me, but noted. Next, can you get the ATR value over the past 14 bars. I'll just make it seven bars, seven bars in PineScript version five syntax. Uh, can you write code to get the ATR value? Sure, here is an example, blah, blah, blah. Um, wow. Well, this is interesting. It's teaching me something. I didn't know you could put these parameters wonder if this is accurate. And also, just because the ATR is a volatility indicator doesn't mean it can't be used for entry or exit signals. There are ways you could use the ATR, probably not on its own, but in conjunction with other indicator values, it can make a decent ent entry or exit parameter, like a Keltner band breakout system, for example, comes to mind. Let's see if this works. Yeah, I thought so. I wonder where I got that from. It only takes a length. That code is incorrect. There are too many parameters in the ATR function. Why am I teaching an AI Pine script? I can't, can't switch off my teaching brain. There are too many parameters in the, is it even gonna matter? Is it even gonna know what I'm doing? What I'm trying to say? It worked with the RSI code. Can you rewrite that code, but with the correct parameter? for the TA.ATR function. Stop apologizing, just be better. You are correct that the ATR function only requires one parameter, yes, which is the number of bars over which the ATR will be calculated. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is impressive. I think that, that looks right to me. Wow. <laughs> Well done. That's correct. Thank you for your feedback. I'm glad I could provide the correct information this time. I apologize yet again. PineScript is a powerful tool for creating custom indicators and strategies, and I'm here to help you with any question or problem you may have with it. All right, well, you've been incorrect every time I've asked a question, but you're getting there. The past two are correct. What else can we ask it? How about one I get asked all the time and something I'm still trying to work on a solution for. Let's see how smart this AI is. Can you write PineScript code for me that will detect divergence on an RSI indicator? Incorrect study function, but it's all right. Everything else is right so far. Crossover, cross under, what is this? This doesn't look like divergence detection for the RSI. It's looking for crossovers of the RSI value with price high and lows. What the hell is that about? This is a Frankenstein script. I don't think this is accurate. I don't think this will detect anything. This code first calculates the RSI value and stores it, blah, blah, blah. Then checks for bearish divergence using the crossover function to compare the RSI val with low values. That's not going to work. Um, blah, blah, blah. Finally, it plots the signals. Please keep in mind that this is a basic example and you can add more conditions. Hmm. I don't know what's going on here, but let's have a look. I have to fix this again. Study should be indicator and it hasn't used any of the PineScript 5 syntax for this. Oh boy. It's weird that it missed this one, but got these right. I don't think that's correct. It's not plotting any signals. 
Well, interesting. Seems capable of simple things. What else can we ask it? What's one last thing we can ask it? How about, what do you think of Zen and the art of trading and their Pine script courses? Are they any good? <laughs> Perhaps it should take one. As an AI, I am not able to have an opinion, but as a language model, I can tell you that Zen and the Art of Trading is a trading education company that provides trading courses, including PineScript courses. They have been in the market for some time and have a reputation for providing quality education. That's good to know. It's important to keep in mind that different users may have different opinions about the quality of the courses, true, and it's always a good idea to research and read reviews before making a decision on whether to take a course or not. 100% agree. No course or education can guarantee you profits or success in trading, that's true. Ultimately, it's up to the individual trader to make their own decisions based on their own research and analysis. This is wise words from a robot. Well put, my AI friend. That's all for today. As you were. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm glad I could assist you. It was a pleasure helping you today. If you have any other questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. I've made a friend. <laughs> I will definitely be revisiting this. Well, as you can see, um, it wasn't a complete failure. I. When I set out to do this video, I wasn't really sure what I expected, but this did exceed my expectations. Like going into this video, I expected the chat GPT to give me incorrect code just because PineScript is such a niche language. Uh, I'm sure it does much better with more popular languages where there's more, you know, public information, stack overflow threads, and, you know, there's millions and millions of articles written about some of the more popular languages. There's probably not that many. Um, comparatively speaking for PineScript. And I'm sure it doesn't get many questions about PineScript from users. And I'm sure that's a factor in training the AI as well. But, you know, it started off giving me the incorrect code and with a few suggestions, you know, first it gave me, I don't know what this is. This might be original PineScript code. It doesn't, doesn't have a version annotation function. So I'm not really sure what version this syntax is. But once I told it, it needs to use the version five syntax. Uh, it's just simply added that to the script and that didn't, but didn't change the code. So that was inaccurate. But by giving it an example of the correct code, uh, eventually it got it right. And it gave me correct PineScript code. Now I don't know if it was just regurgitating what I gave it, but it's impressive nonetheless. Definitely something we as traders and tech people, people in the coding programming, uh, we need to pay attention to this uh, software, this technology going forward. I think in the years to come, this is going to be um, a pretty impressive tool for some use cases. For now, it's obviously still in beta, but very interesting nonetheless. All right, I'll wrap up this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I know we didn't learn much, but I thought this was a pretty interesting experiment. Uh, I'll speak with you in the next video next week, hopefully. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more PineScript lessons. There'll be more practical lessons on the way in the weeks to come. And uh, check out the email weekly newsletter if that's something you're curious about. Again, it's completely free, no spam, no marketing just tips and value for you guys. Take care. Good luck with your trading. Have a great day.